Hello and good morning. Um, let me first of all welcome all of you who have joined us this morning from the comfort of your homes, in your offices, in your cars, heading into town, or in the wards now working to save our people and our motherland from the dreadful pandemic COVID-19. The social distancing protocols require that we reach you via the medium of live television and radio and also digitally. But let me thank my friends from the media who have been able to join us here physically and to help bring this short activity to you wherever you are. I've also been joined by a number of officials from the National Democratic Congress NDC COVID-19 technical team and some staff of my office. As has become my battle cry over the last few weeks, my brothers and sisters, we are not in normal times at all. So please and please, if you have nothing essential doing outside of your home, please stay at home and observe the protocols of hand washing as frequently as you can. Let's disinfect commonly used surfaces as often as we can while continuing to wash our hands and using the alcohol-based hand sanitizers. The COVID-19 pandemic and its outbreak in Ghana has brought out the very best in all of us. It has been heartwarming to see how political, religious, and social differences have evaporated and been replaced by a sense of unity and camaraderie in a bid to beat back the disease. We've all, with one accord, contributed our widow's might, donated what little we can, mobilized and shown care to the needy in our society. We have rallied to a national call in ways that have not been seen for quite a while. Many are having to stay at home, shut down their businesses, both big and small, despite the economic implications on their families and their workforces. Of course, I say thank you to our health workers across the length and breadth of our country for the role they continue to play towards defending us and our, all our people against this virus. I'm deeply touched by the enthusiasm and sacrifice of our health workers and I'm elated that government's heavy investments in health infrastructure is paying off today. I appreciate you all, and Ghanaians appreciate you. Are you cool? I must quickly add that it isn't a good thing that health workers across the country still do not have personal protective equipment. This is obviously because we did not plan early as a country, and our importation of these items and test kits was also late. Also, I must add that the demand for test kits and personal protective equipment have outstripped supply globally. It is within that spirit that despite this shortage, we have managed to secure and procure a quantity of PPEs, which you see behind me here, for distribution to a number of health facilities. Last Sunday, in response to the cries of health workers at the Greater Accra Regional Hospital, popularly called the Rich Hospital, I presented 100 PPEs together with other items, sanitizers, face masks, gloves, gum boots, and drinking water to them. It was our modest contribution to ensure that the health workers have the needed confidence to continue their sacrifice to safeguard the rest of us who are not victims to the virus and also to protect themselves. This morning, I have the pleasure of handing over a total of 500 PPEs together with 500 gum boots. They contain sanitizers, face masks, gloves, head covers, and several other critical items needed by our health workers. 
the total value of these items is 300,000 Ghana cities. I'm pleased to prevent, present this to our COVID team for onward presentation to a number of health facilities, including the Tamale Teaching Hospital, Kolibu, and other regional and district hospitals. In view of the situation in Kolibu in particular, and the threats from the health workers in respect of their own protection, I've had to make some adjustments in the distribution formula. And we're currently looking around to secure an additional 150 PPEs at an extra cost of 90,000 Ghana cities to reach out to other facilities in the regions. This puts the total number of PPEs we'll be handing over to 650 sets at a cost of 390,000 cities. I make this modest contribution to the fight to rid our beloved country of this most insidious ailment. It is my hope that it goes some way to alleviate the plight of our brave frontline health workers as the authorities make arrangements to increase the supply of these items. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great humility that I note the massive investments that was made in health facilities during my tenure as president. And I'm happy to note that these are becoming a part of the mainstay of the response to the novel coronavirus. This marks progress and demonstrates what vision and foresight can do in nation building. That notwithstanding, it has become clear in an era of pandemics and infectious diseases that a reactionary approach does not offer a sustainable path to protecting our people and economy from the harmful effects of such outbreaks. A more proactive state of readiness must be put in place going forward. No longer must it be the case that dangerous diseases like Ebola, SARS, MERS, or COVID-19 reach our shores before we scramble around to arrest their impact. These diseases have unfortunately become serious threats to our survival and go beyond just the health of our people. They have adverse implications for our, on our economy and our way of life. In that regard, I wish to table the following proposals, which I believe will leave us better prepared and ready to take on any future eventuality, especially during pandemics like the COVID-19 case. These proposals form a part of our manifesto, which we intend to launch later in the year when we have collectively defeated this pandemic. It has become necessary, however, to make these public because of the current climate and in the hope that, to the extent possible, they may be factored into ongoing efforts to combat this disease. If there's any lesson to be drawn from COVID-19, it is the fact that we are not immune from pandemics that hitherto were deemed to be far removed from us. While we may have been spared outbreaks like Ebola, SARS, MERS, and the like, we have been very much affected by COVID-19, which has proven extremely disruptive to our lives and holds the potential of having dire consequences for our economy. The relative fragility of our health and social welfare systems make us even more vulnerable to its fallouts. Our people stand to suffer tremendously if such diseases are allowed to take us by surprise. Even as we count the cost, it is imperative that we learn the lessons of today and act now to ensure that we are much better prepared when, not if, the next pandemic rears its head. To this end, I propose the immediate development of a national infectious diseases response plan that clearly sets out the specific steps that must be taken to prevent the entry of such diseases, quickly arrest them even if they do enter our shores at a very early stage and reduce their impact to the barest minimum on our population. We must establish another medical research center with capacity like the Leguichi Memorial Institute for Medical Research in the northern part of Ghana. We must expand the 37 military hospital doubling the current bed size and also build an infectious diseases center there to cater for the southern sector 
to help with the management of cases like Ebola and COVID-19. A second and fully equipped National Infectious Disease Center should be built in the middle and northern sectors of the country. As part of our national strategic medical stock, we must have items such as PPEs and other vital logistics in place well in advance of any outbreak. The current shortage which has led to a global, global scramble for these items show that it is only the early bird that will catch the worm. We must always be prepared and not be caught off guard again in such a situation. A key plank of this strategy is to boost the capacity of our manufacturing firms to produce these items locally to reduce, if not eliminate, our dependence on imports, which can be unreliable in times like this. While we are at it, I want to urge government to expand the testing centers to include the Nabrungo, Kitapur, Nabrungo and Kitapur research centers, ensuring that Noguchi or the KCCR supports them to test more people in good time. In addition to some suggestions I made yesterday, I can urge government to also consider moving the deadlines for businesses to submit their SNITs and tax returns a little period back due to the many factors that are affecting businesses, including depletion of manpower and difficulties with modalities of payment. We need a proper trickling down economics to alleviate the plight of Ghanaians. Direct distribution, buffer stock must help step in to distribute food to the most deprived households in the most deprived communities. We must consider expanding leave to cover many more poor households. Vitamin C, fruits, and food supplements should also be distributed to the poor and vulnerable. Government through the Ministry of Health must target vulnerable groups such as people with cancer, diabetes, asthma, pregnant women, and extend support to them. Hospitals would have some data on these such people. Reducing direct taxes and zero rate tax on essential products such as sanitizers, disinfectant wipes, toilet roll, and possibly food for a while. Provide insurance for frontline health workers and security personnel who are engaged in the fight against COVID-19. The need for a partnership in ECOWAS and AU and consensual efforts to manage our borders and movement of people, and also leverage on food production capabilities of food such as rice, grain, and other, other such products. And then, like I said yesterday, also negotiate with the telcos a possible reduction in tariffs so, so that um, we can pass on that to many of our people who are working from home or are having to stay at home. This can be done, this negotiation can be done with an assurance of a free six-month extension of their licenses, some of which I'm informed are to expire soon. In conclusion, my countrymen and women, let us stay home, let us respect social distancing protocols, let us wash our hands with soap and the running water regularly. We will win this fight against the coronavirus together. I want to thank you and may God bless our homeland, Ghana. So this is a sample. They are packed so that they don't get infected. Each kit has a medical face mask. This is of medical standard. It's got uh, gloves. It's got the cover for the hair. It's got goggles to cover the eyes. It's got um, the PPE, that is the gown. And then it's got a bottle of hand sanitizer in it. They are all packed together so that people don't infect them or touch them until the user is ready to open them. And then we have gum boots for the legs, 
so that when they go into the ward, if there is any infection on the floor, it will not uh, attach to their bodies. And so, Madam, over to you. 